get the worst exile cards in Magic the Gathering. Uh, and by the way, it doesn't have to exile permanents. It could exile cards from anywhere. Selective Memory, a blue three generic sorcery. Search your library for any number of non-land cards and exile them. Then shuffle your library. I'm gonna repeat, non-land cards. You have to exile non-land cards from your own deck. Any number of them. And then you would gotta shuffle your deck after that. I don't even know why you'd wanna torture yourself for four mana. Like, what are you gonna exile the cards you don't think are relevant left in the game? The thing that you would usually wanna exile if you had the option is remove all your lands so you can just draw straight gas for the rest of the game. Then this card would be an absolute banger. Or maybe I could search my opponent's deck for all their cards and eg uh, exile the non land ones. But it gives you the option to exile all your stuff uh, and then basically play with nothing. You show, you tell, I guess this plus maybe treasure hunt could potentially be like some sort of weird combo, maybe? But I've never seen it actually happen. Styles like cards a banger. <laughs> but silly banger. No, that's it's terrible. All right, we'll move on with uh, Toilet Duck with the worf, Worm Fang Behemoth. Worm Fang. We have a <laughs> It's another blue card. What do, you, what do you know? Blue cards are terrible at exiling stuff. Five mana, five, five, Nightmare Beast. When it comes into play, remove all cards from your ha in your hand from the game. And when it leaves play, return the removed cards to their owner's hand. It's like I Oblivion ringed my own hand for nothing. And what did I get out of it? It was like only a five, five creature for five mana. It's absolutely terrible. I guess it's some weird insurance. I don't know, you play Worm Fang, Alpha, uh, Worm Fang Behemoth, put, I don't know, some bomb into exile and then if they somehow deal with the worm fang behemoth then you're gonna want that card back not probably not okay next up triple three leveler comes to mind i don't know if we can count leveler i like in a vacuum it's pretty bad so leveler in a vacuum is just downright terrible uh, five mana, ten, ten comes into play remove your library from the game so you'll just you'll be dead next turn draw a card or be forced to draw a card the game is over the idea is you like play leveler in addition to something like Thassa's Oracle or um, a laboratory maniac so there's like some combo potential there so uh, out of context <clears throat> yes this is terrible uh, in context it actually could be amazing toads with arc blade Arcblade is a five mana sorcery. It deals two damage to any target. Exile Arcblade with three time counters on it. I guess we can. It doesn't really exile anything. It, like literally exiles itself. I don't know. I don't really count that one. So what's your other card? Mud Hole. I mean, maybe I should count cards that exile themselves. Mud Hole, three mana, instant. Target player removes all land land cards in their graveyard from the game. Now that is absolutely terrible. I can think of maybe one deck in the entire history of Magic the Gathering that this would actually affect. Like maybe a lands deck, maybe a life, like even if you do this to a life from the loam deck, they'll just loam next turn. And they'll get their their engine going again anyway. Remove to, yeah, target player removes all land cards from their graveyard from the game. At least it's at instant speed. They could have just made this one mana and still would barely see play. Alright, our first super chat from the day from Meme Bruley. Uh, thank you very much for your super chat. Assert authority. Asserting dominance. If it doesn't count, donate it. Yeah, we're gonna have what, the type of show where people are like, I don't know if this counts or not. Okay, we have a seven mana instant affinity for artifacts. Carry target spell. If it's countered this way, remove it from the game instead of putting it into, into its owner's graveyard. I'll count it. So what, if I have five artifacts on the battlefield, I have a regular counter spell. So even the affinity, I've never seen this card before because even the affinity decks don't even want to save up two mana to play this thing. They have better things to do. Not to mention they could just play regular counter spell. Like, this is playing counter spell the hard way. I guess you get the exile effect if you really need it. That's yeah, that's possible. Larry Lau with Ornate Kanzashi. Ornate Kanzashi, a five-mana artifact. Pay two tap. 
Target opponent removes the top card of their library from the game. You can play this card this turn. Actually, it's a little bit of a gamble, but I could see it being a little has a little bit of potential. Would I play this thing for five mana and then for an additional uh, two mana and tap it? No. It's like a really expensive um, codex shredder in some way. Like, if you know your opponent has some, like, really good card on top of their deck, you just activate this. Turns off the tutors. I could see, I could see trying really hard to make, make this work. But, uh, it still will never be worth it for the amount of cost. Hello, Erlen. Can't stay for long. No problem. Hello, hello, hello. Elixir with Divine Gambit. Does this card exile anything? Okay, it's a uh, white, white sorcery. Oh, yeah, exile target artifact creature or enchantment and opponent controls. That player may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Beware. You exile my little thing, and then comes out the big thing. Comes out big brother. Big brother gonna protect little brother or little sister. Okay, next up. Um, let's. There's no wait. Memory jar is busted. What are you talking about? Okay, the grip of amnesia. Looks like the the show will be dominated by bad blue cards. The worst of the worst that no one's heard of. Grip of Amnesia is a blue one generic instant. Counter target spell unless its controller removes his or her graveyard from the game. How hard is that? Draw a card? What does the oracle text say? I must be missing something. I must be missing something. Counter target spell unless its controller exiles all cards from their graveyard. If I have nothing in my graveyard, I will just say yes. Cool story, bro. Yeah, you can uh you can take my entire graveyard. There was nothing in there in the first place. Holy crap! That is garbage. It's a it's basically two mana cycle and then probably get their like exile their graveyard. I guess it is some very bizarre form of graveyard hate in blue. You might put some people to a decision uh, if they desperately need their graveyard. All right, next up. Stano with a ye, ye Old Pillar Flame went hard in 2011. Oh, it's Pillar of Flame. Pillar of Flame. It's one mana, deal two damage, exile the creature? Yeah, uh, at sorcery speed. Sorcery speed. Pillar of Flame deals two damage to any target. If a creature dealt damage this way, it would die this turn. Exile it instead. Yeah, I swear there was a metagame for this. Because exiling creatures was important at one time. What, Navison Restored? I think it did see play in Standard. But maybe because it was like the best, best removal spell for red at the time. But I, I don't remember very well. Okay, next up. Um... Stomp? I thought Stomp is good. I'm a huge fan of Stomp. Stomp from Bone Crusher Giant. What does it do? Damage can't prevent it prevented. Um it has actually nothing to do with exiling anything. I mean, except for the adventure goes to exile, but that we're not we're not counting that. What did I, the card itself cannot go to exile. Or it can, but it has to exile something else uh, on its way out. Kano is parallel. Thoughts is removal bait for your best cards. So it is five mana enchantment. When parallel thoughts comes into play, search your library for seven cards, remove them from the game in a face down pile, and shuffle that library. The shuff then shuffle your library. Oh, so you shuffle the pile, and then you shuffle your library. If you would draw a card, you may instead put the top card of your of the pile you removed into your hand. Hmm. Five mana to potentially just draw bombs for the next seven turns. I like it. I like how bad it is. <laughs> uh, okay, next up. Uh, a blackbird with hollow scarab. Or, yeah, hollow scarab. Uh, it is the insect. It's two mana, two one insect. Pay two, exile hollow scarab from the grave from your graveyard to create a treasure token. Yeah, we'll do that. Come on, does that count? Okay, I'll count this one. It exiled itself from the graveyard as part of an activated ability. 
Uh, next super chat we got from Alpha Nerd. We got the Alabaster Host. Alabaster. Okay, we have to be more specific. A lot of Alabaster cards in here. Host Intercessor. Hot trash. We have a six mana three four Phyrexian Samurai, and is a battlefield exile target creature and opponent controls until Alabaster Host Incestor. Leaves the battlefield. I feel like this card's name is like one word too long. Uh, it's got plane cycling. Hey, plane, nothing wrong with plane cycling. So what is this creature? It is like, uh, what is it? Something hunter, witness hunter, hunter witness, no. Hunted, fiend hunter. That's what I was thinking of. It is beefed up fiend hunter. Fiend hunter went to the gym, did some workouts. You know, got in their reps on a daily basis, and then after a few years, is now a 3 4 Frexian Samurai to show for it. Uh, and can plane cycle now. Yeah, that plane cycling. But it's for two mana. When I land cycle, I want to land cycle for one mana. Already, two mana is like way too much these days. Abzo, false prophet. Good morning, Rodolfo. We have a 4-mana 2-2 two, two Human Cleric. When False Prophet is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, exile all creatures. That's not bad! That's not bad at all. No one's going to want to touch this guy. I don't know. You let me know. Yeah, the Prophet is great. I don't know. Maybe it is bad. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't be uh, entirely sure. I've never played with it. I've never played against it. It's awkward. But if you play this with some sort of sack outlet, I mean, you can exile the entire board at a moment's notice. Like, hey... Don't you dare attack me. If you do, I'm wiping the board. It's all going to exile. We all go down together. You're the man. He jumped over the bridge. Got to follow him. Uh, next up, let's take a look at Alex, Cobbled Lancer. Cobbled Lancer. This is a blue 3-3 three, three zombie horse. As an additional cost to cast this spell, exile a creature card from, <laughs> from your graveyard. Uh, blue 3 generic, exile Cobbled Lancer from your graveyard to draw a card. What a weird card. So it is a 3-3 three, three on turn 1 if you can somehow get a creature card in your graveyard. And then second off, it can exile itself from the graveyard. Got a Delver of Secrets here on turn 1. Well, the problem is getting... The tough part is getting the creature in uh, the graveyard turn 1. Topmost flavor, Apocalypse. Also goes in Stupid Red Sorcery. Apocalypse. Isn't this a good card, though? Oh, maybe I'm thinking of Obliterate. Okay, waiting. There we go. Five mana, sorcery, remove all permanents from the game. Discard your hand. Oh, yeah, so this is the one-sided... It's a board wipe, but I lose my hand. Everyone else gets to keep theirs. Uh, okay, next up... One. Stanel says, False Prophet really pushing the four mana 2-2 two -two syndrome. Yeah. Hey, if you're going to wipe out the entire board, you better cost four mana. Steve Cooper with Banish from Adorus. Wherever that is. Five mana sorcery. This spell costs two less to cast if it targets a tapped creature. Exile target creature. So what you're telling... Whoa! How did this come from a Lord of the Rings set? This is literally... Three mana exile a creature. Like, we have so many cards these days are just one mana exile a creature. There's no way. This, I mean, they they knew they were building a draft common uh, uh, when they designed this. It's not even good. Three mana to exile a tapped creature. No. That is a sad panda card if I ever saw one. The end. Yes, a real magic card. Could give it to me in quotation marks. Once upon a time, the end. Is this real? How do I find it? Oh, here it is. Okay, I found it. We found the end. The four mana instant. The spell costs two less to cast if your life total is five or less. And then exile target creature or planeswalker. Search this controller's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards with the same name as that permanent and exile them. That player shuffles and draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. So basically in Commander, this is going to be stone cold trash. Because you'll just... You'll exile that one creature. 
or you'll exile that one planeswalker and you will never find another one that's it that's the only one uh next up we have super chat from alpha nerd temporal flank maybe useful but doubtful temporal flanker temporal did i put in temporal flank such thing does not exist alpha nerd temporal and there's so many cards called temporal okay can i find a temporal flank or something that sounds similar temporal fisher a temporal eddie there is no such thing as temporal flank as far as i'm concerned there's nothing moving on we're gonna donate it we'll donate it to oh boy uh carrying rats Unless you can, uh, Alpha Nerd, you can find me what the hell this temporal, this temporal flank meant. Okay, we have a black 2-1 rat. When it attacks or blocks, any player may remove a card from their graveyard from the game. If a player does, Kieran Rats deals no damage this turn. Sorry, rats. I'm gonna exile this scrap of meat from my graveyard and feed you, and all of a sudden you don't, not even thinking about attacking me. You got the munchies. The Abyss Soul, Day of the Dragons. The Blue Dragons is a seven man enchantment. When Day of the Dragons enters the battlefield, exile all creatures you, you control. Uh, then create that many 5-5 five, five red dragon. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, then you create that many 5-5 five, five red dragon creature tokens with flying. So you have a bunch of tokens. You can upgrade them all into 5-5 uh, five, five dragons. When Day of the Dragons leaves play, sacrifice all dragons you control, then return the exiled cards to the battlefield under your control. So if you, there is a lot of awkwardness with this. If you try to, yeah, so like tokens, here's the thing. If you do the, go the token route, this will completely wipe out all your tokens. And then if they can remove Day of the Dragons, you're not getting the tokens back. They're gone. Uh, so there is a very high risk, high reward with that type of strategy. Mana Severance from King Ginger. This is a silly card, your friendly neighborhood idiot says. Mana Severance for two mana sorcery. Search your library for any number of land cards and remove them from the game. Shuffle your library afterwards. That seems great! Search your library for any number of land cards and remove them from the game. I mean, would I actually play this? It was funny, we were just talking about, what is it called, memory selection? Now what makes me wonder I think it's called memory selection. Memory. Oh no, it was selective memory. Yeah. So I was just talking about how this card is four mana, and you would never want to get rid of your like your non-land cards. If only we could get rid of the lands, and then all of a sudden, boom, we have mana severance. Strictly better selective memory. It's doing more of what you want to do anyway. You don't want mana screw? Well, once you hit six six or seven lands, mana severance. You're not going to draw a land again. Some people will want this card. It's on the reserve list. It's not on the reserve list. They might even reprint it one day. For Ginkka, rumors of my death. Yes, that's a full name of a card including those dots. <laughs> okay. Rumors of my death. Oh, what do, what's up with you people in the silver border cards? Three mana enchantment. Exile a permanent you control for four mana. With a, a League of Dastardly Doom watermark. I guess it's this watermark that we see over here. Return a permanent card with a League of Dastardly Doom watermark from your graveyard to the battlefield. I'm assuming this is terrible, especially since it's like such a niche format. Uh, Polrog, Worldfire. Honestly, this is not that bad. I mean, look, it's even $15. People like to... It's a powerful effect. And if you float mana, um, it doesn't empty mana pools. So, I mean, you could, if the, in theory, just float a bunch of mana, world fire with mana extra, just kill everybody. Finish them off for the last one point of damage. 
Mario! Descent into Madness. Uh, descend into... Something? Something? Somewhere? Maybe? Are we... Am I descending? Is it descent? Instead of descend? Oh, it was descent! Okay, I've saved it. We have a five-man enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, uh, put a despair counter on Descent into Madness. Then each player exiles X permanence. He or she controls and or cards from his or her hand, where X is the number of despair counters on, on Descent into Madness. What? Okay, at my upkeep, we're gonna put a despair. We're gonna put a despair counter on this. Then each player exiles X permanence they control, and or cards from their hand, where X is the number of despair. Ah, I see. So. It's like, um, it's like a five mana braids, it's almost like a braid, it's like a compounding, uh, braids card, if I understand this correctly. Every upkeep you start losing stuff, but it can't be your commander, and it costs five mana, and it will do nothing the turn it comes into play. Uh, next up. Okay, Alpha Nerd is decides to redeem themselves with Lazelle's Acrobatics. We be gambling. Lazelle's Acrobatics. It is a uh, white three generic instant. Exile all non-token creatures you control. Then we are going to be rolling the d20. Then from one to nine, return those cards to the battlefield under the owner's controls at the beginning of the next end step. So potentially, this card will do nothing. Uh, or so, or, or 10 to 20, so it's not 50-50 around here. It's like 45-55. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control, then exile them again. Return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. What the hell are you are we doing here? Hold on, are we actually just, we're just blinking our own stuff? Exile all non-token creatures you control. Oh yeah, it is only your, you control. It actually says so on the card. We may or may not get what we want out of this card, but holy crap, if we are, uh, if we got the ETB effects, this could go, this could go wild. Are we playing Mario Party now? Okay, Vagilus Fear, Amulet of Unmasking. Oh, I almost started the show with this card. The five mana artifact, pay five, tap. Remove Amulet of Unmasking from the game. So you can't even use it all over again. Remove target artifact, creature, or land from the game. Play this ability as a sorcery. At sorcery speed, I will deal with your creature for a whole 10 mana. For 10 mana, any deck can exile spells. It doesn't matter what part of the color pie you're part of. Okay. Yeah, so the that last card was the uh, re-triggering everything ETB. Okay, Re, a Supreme Inquisitor. This is a five mana, one three wizard lord, which means it's just a human wizard these days. Tap five untapped wizards you control. Search target player's library for up to five cards and remove them from the game. Then that player shuffles their library. I have to tap five untapped wizards we control. Well, we're going to memory select your deck five wizards at a time. I just need some sort of like untap all my wizards tech and then we're golden. Uh, next up, let's take a look. Station Disasters Ignorant Bliss exiles your hand for that turn. Did we look at that one? Ignorant Bliss. Oh, I guess we didn't. We have, it's a red two mana instant. Remove all cards in your hand from the game face down. At end of turn, return those cards to your hand, then draw a card. Why? Why? Like, why are we even doing this? Because it doesn't even deserve this sound effect. It deserves the Titanic sound effect. This is like the weirdest cycling card I've ever seen. I thought this was leading to something. Like, all right, you exile all your cards face down. All your creatures in play get like plus 10, plus 10, and then and trample. At end of turn, return your hand back to your hand effectively so it's like exile your hand draw a car bring your hand back and draw a card it's not like i even got anything out of this thing 
remove all cards in your hand from the game face down. I guess it's supposed... Okay, hold on. So, I... Yeah, maybe anti-discard attack. I guess... You know what? If I were to try really hard, you could, like, in response to a time twister or a wheel of fortune, play ignorant bliss. And I guess you protect your hand. And then, like, when you draw seven cards, and then you'll get your cards back, and then you'll have just a huge handful of cards. Which you probably can't even use, because you're gonna discard a hand size next turn. Oh, no, uh, at end of turn, return. No, it's at end of turn. Well, oh, no, that's fine at end of turn. Because you, you, it's an instant speed. You can do this on your opponent's turn. Dodges discard. Yeah, that's right. We should just waste our turn playing the ignorant bliss. Just to dodge discard for a turn. Haha, <laughs> you trying to thought seize me? No, no, no. Joke's on you. Ignorant bliss. I don't know, if, any, if anyone plays this in Commander and gets somebody with a Wheel of Fortune, I would love it. Uh, ignorant plus plus balance. That is banned. That's not allowed around here. Okay, Ecos. Bottled Cloister. Exile all your stuff. I'm seeing a pattern here. The cards that are the worst are the ones that exile your stuff, not anyone else's stuff. Uh, artifact at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep. Exile all cards from your hand face down. At the beginning of your upkeep, return all cards you own exiled with a bottled cloister to your hand. Then you draw a card. Uh, combo with ensnare. You mean the last card? Comboing with it? Okay, next up. Let's take Nathan. Scour from existence. Seven, seven mana to exile one permanent. Yeah, yeah, you're just gonna have to max out ten credit cards. I don't know, put a mortgage on your house and you can pay for that scar from existence. Okay, Christopher B. Scarab Feast. Uh, one black. Instant. Exile up to three target cards from a single graveyard. And it has cycling. Honestly... This is one of the best cards we've seen on the show, like in terms of just like being having some utility. It has it's like graveyard hate for one mana, but if it's not useful as graveyard hate, you can just cycle it away. It does not really meet the bar of terrible. We want the worst, the worst of the worst. I could see someone playing this card. It's budget graveyard hate. All right, Alex, what do you got for us? Here's an old one, denying wind. Sounds like someone forcing someone not to fart. You are not allowed to fart around here. You cannot. I am denying your wind. No farting allowed. Uh, there's the fart clouds in the back. We have a nine mana sorcery. Search target player's library for up to seven cards and remove them from the game. Then that player shuffles their library. How many cards did they design like this? It's like they've been making cards like this for blue for forever and they're worthless like even for limited even if this was a draft card you don't even want to play this at nine mana at nine mana it should be like exile their entire library except three cards let's get the game like if i have nine lands in play let's get the game going let's get let's finish it off well anyway um, yeah, but I'll tell you one thing I'm not going to deny you, and that is great deals at FusionGamingOnline.com. Remember, the deal, this is a spring break sale, 72-hour sale between March 27th and March 29th. Get the deals while they're hot. Hot singles! Not only are they hot, they're 20% off. Everything. All single cards you could possibly want. Uh, when you have a deal this good, my coupon code never works. But just in case you're too late for the sale, for the spring break sale, this co coupon code works uh, any other time, <laughs> and usually with other deals. So use coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get five additional, or get five percent off your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. Play all formats you want. Play Commander. Play one-on-one -on -one Commander. You're looking for a CEDH casual crowd. You're looking for one-on-one -on -one Magic. They got it free on Magic Online. And you can rent the cards for your commander decks using Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore Z-U-E. 
back to denying wind. Yeah, hot singles around my air for 20% off. That sounds really awkward. <laughs> hot singles, 20% off. The FBI is watching. Uh, okay, Turiot with Knowledge Vault. Knowledge? Four mana artifact, pay two, tap. Exile the top card of your library face down. Why? Uh, pay zero, sacrifice Knowledge Vault. If you do, discard your hand. <laughs> put all exiled cards. So, put all cards exiled with Knowledge Vault into their owner's hand. When Knowledge Vault leaves play, put all cards exiled with Knowledge Vault into their owner's graveyard. Oh, God! This is like super high risk, super high. It's high risk, super low reward. So, I'm paying so far four mana. Then two mana, put a card face down. Two mana, put a card face down. Put two card, two mana, put a card face down. I still gotta hope Knowledge Vault never gets exiled. Um, I have to also hope I can also sacrifice this, and if I sacrifice this, I also have to hope that it doesn't get stifled. I lose my hand. Yeah, no, that's about it, and I, I get these cards back. It is a very, very awkward card draw. Slowest card draw in all of Magic: The Gathering. Uh, next up... Oh, Safe Haven. Such a great, terrible card. I've looked at this type of card so many times, and I'm like, can I make this work? Can I? Is it possible? And the answer is no. So, oh, oh, the answer to this type of card is always no. no. God, please, no! Pay two, tap. Remove target creature you control from the game. Now, that's important. It's also more important that this is a land that does not tap for mana. Now, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice Safe Haven. If you do, return each card removed from the game with Safe Haven to play under its owner's control. It's like it's like you're protecting against a threat that doesn't even exist yet. Like you don't know if your opponent's gonna board wipe you, so why would you Safe Haven the thing? The dark version of this card is seven dollars. Everything else is like someone's playing this card because it's not it's, it's not two cents. Who's playing safe haven out there? And I have to sacrifice my safe haven on top of that. Just to activate this to, to like trigger this thing. And if if I put like five creatures underneath safe haven and then you like strip mine me, I lose all my creatures. That is absolutely terrible. Like the rest of the table will be like, you know, they'll, they'll be going crazy. You safe havened all your creatures? Well, it wasn't quite safe there at all. It's not like it says when it leaves the battlefield, you get all your creatures back. Yeah, exactly. Seven dollars for this? Well, it's from the darks. For the people, everyone trying to collect the card. Here, here's the original one. You need to collect your the dark collection, and you're gonna need a safe haven. Grocor Games says you could technically do it in response to a board wipe, I suppose, but it's terrible. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, but yeah, but you have th this is true. You do in response do it to a board wipe, um, but you're still gonna be trading like a safe. Here's the thing: if you're gonna do exile one creature, then you're. I guess you just save a bomb card. I guess that's the idea. You play safe haven. You want to save your bomb creature that's on the battlefield. Maybe that's like that's the idea. If you have multiple creatures on the battlefield, though, you can only save one. Unless you start, like, protecting them one at a time. I guess there's also some cards that might be in play, like, uh, that you know that are going to get to a point where it blows up the board, but it's going to be, like, two or three turns from now, so you can start safe havening creatures. Anyway, I'm not going to try to defend this card any longer. Safe haven is safely garbage. Alpha Nerd with Mana Severance. Didn't we just look at that one? We looked at that card, like, just a few minutes ago. Or maybe you got the super chat in before, uh, at the wrong time. Okay, so we're gonna donate- whoops! Okay, we're gonna donate your super chat. Uh, we'll donate to... Toilet Ducks Juggernaut Peddler. I didn't know a Juggernaut can be a peddler. Is this a real This is an arena card. Okay, it's a black-white 2-2 two, two human artificer with vigilance. 
When it enters the battlefield, target player reveals all non-land cards in their hand. You may choose one of those cards. If you do, that player exiles it and conjures a card named Juggernaut into their hand. That is awful! Okay, I exile your card and you get a Juggernaut. Then you can play the Juggernaut versus me. Next super chat we got from... I want to get to this super chat because uh, I cleared it from my list. Clear the land ramp yourself in, th uh -huh, in EDH three opponents. Clear the land. It's got a poor Wumpus over here. Uh, it's supposed to be good. Ramp yourself in plus in th EDH three opponents. Uh, this is... Sorcery. Each player reveals the top five cards of their library, puts into play tapped all land cards revealed this way, and removes the rest from the game. Oh, is that it? Each player reveals the top five cards of their library. Oh, so it's ramp for everybody. It's like group hug ramp. Interesting. Uh, Sazix, Arc Slogger. Five mana creature. It's a four five. Pay red. Remove the top ten cards of your library from the game. Arc Slugger deals two damage to target creature or player. What? I. What? We gotta re read this card. I'm removing the top ten cards of my library from the game, and I have to pay a red mana to deal two damage to a single creature or player. Not to mention, this card costs five mana. Well, if I want to kill a 10 power creature, I have to exile like 50 cards from my deck. Yeah, 5 mana. I spent 5 mana on my card and all I got was this? Someone should make a cube of all the worst cards in Magic the Gathering from all my entire series of like worst live shows. Yeah, this is abs- this completely blows! This is like one of the worst abilities of all time! Oh, you can hit a player. I guess that's the... Okay, they didn't want... That's the deal. So, I guess in one-on-one -on -one magic, where people have life totals of, like, 20, you could conceivably get someone down to, like, 6, and then activate this 3 time to deal the last 6 points of damage. But in Commander, it's stone-cold useless. You'll run out of cards before... You'll run out of cards uh, before you can, like, kill your opponent's life total because they have 40 life. Yeah, and it's rare. They're gonna, and they're going to keep it that way. That usually, sometimes they make things rare because cards are janky and weird. They don't want to make, like, they don't really don't want to put, like, a janky weird card like this in the, like, uncommon slot. Because then, like, it's going to come up really often. Yeah. So sometimes rares are good. Some kind, sometimes they're jank. <laughs> Would you even want to use the Oracle with this? Yeah, the weirdest Thorical. Weirdest. That could be a show. Weirdest Thorical Enablers. Arc Slogger. Uh, Cody. Dimensional Breach. You could deal 14 damage before before you basically lose the game. Oh, you know what? You're right, actually. Yeah, you. Hold on. Just, before we go, uh, you could deal as. If you have like 10 mana in play, you could deal 20 damage. Because you're not drawing the cards. You're just removing them from the game. Uh, oh, no. But isn't that part of the cost? No, it's part of the cost. So you have to have the cards in your deck. Because if you don't have 10 cards in your deck, then you can't pay for it. It's not It's not like it says, pay a red, uh, semicolon, remove 10 cards uh, from your deck from the game, deal 2 damage. It's, you have to pay the 10 cards. You got to pay up, people. You give me your 10 cards. Okay, Dimensional Breach. Seven mana for a sorcery. Removal uh, permanence from the game. Okay. As long as any of those cards remain removed from the game, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player returns one of the removed cards they own back to play. Isn't there a card like this? Ugh. Maybe not. I want to say there's like another card that's very similar in nature to this thing. It's like remove everything from the game, but then everyone's going to get like one of those cards like each turn, one back, one after another. Okay, next super chat we got from Ecos Beware the Dark Mage. Sorry, Maze. It may beat you up. This hedge maze is beating me up. 
5 mana for a 4-5 wall. Pay 0. Dark Maze can attack this turn as if it were not a wall. At the at end of the turn... At end of turn, remove Dark Mage from the game. Oh my god. Well, what happens? Like, what is, what is the flavor here? The wall comes alive and just sort of crumbles apart in its own attack? You know, when you're a brick wall, you're, you're pretty stiff. You're a very stiff wall. You gotta take it easy in your retirement. It's just unwall. It unwalls for one second. It can attack as though it were not a wall at all. Well, I guess it, the, the idea is it's gonna crumble down on top of somebody. Which in that case, it should have just dealt damage. It's like exile and deal that much damage to target creature. Alright, Re with uh, uh, Anurid Brush. Brush Hopper. Is good back in the day, but not anymore in today's standard. Uh, three mana. I didn't even know this was good back in the day. Three mana for a three, four. So what's the downside? What's the catch? Discard two cards from your hand. Remove Anurid Brush Hopper from the game. Return it to play under its owner's control at end of turn. It's like, it's okay. I've seen, I mean, hold on, discard. Oh yeah, you remove itself from the game. You get to blink it. It's a three, four that you get to blink. And maybe if you use madness or you need to put cards in your graveyard, it would be a benefit. King Ginger with Forsaken City. Forsaken City is a land. Uh, doesn't untap during your untap step. That'd be your upkeep. You may remove a card in your hand from the game. If you do, untap Forsaken City. Tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Oh, it does have... I was like, where's the exile part of this card? Remove from the game. This is exile. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may remove a card in your hand from the game. If you don't... If, sorry, if you do untap... I have to remove cards in my hand from the game in order to get like my mana out of this it doesn't even it only adds, it's not like it gives me two mana it only gives me one mana and it doesn't untap during my untap step you gotta pay you're gonna pay cards to get like a painless city of brass i could see maybe some deck still wanting this card it comes into play untap maybe you just need the mana once and then that's it cunning linguist bitter ordeal Desperate research. Eat well. You only get one. Okay. Bitter ordeal. We have a black two generic sorcery. Search target player's library for a card and remove it from the game. Then that player shuffles their library, and it's got Grave Storm. So instead of your instead of your life total, instead of killing someone with Grape Shot, you gotta kill someone by taking their entire deck away. With the Grave Storm, it's like when you play the spell, copy it for each permanent put in a graveyard this turn. You may choose new targets for the copy. Oh, it has to be each permanent put into a grave. Oh god, that's terrible. It's not like it's not like you can rattle off a bunch of spells. You, you literally have to be like cycling stuff from ha from the battlefield to the graveyard over and over again. Okay, Alpha Nerd, are you gonna get one that actually qualifies? Ego Drain. And sniped. You've misspelled some cards. Okay, this is a card. Ego Drain for a black sorcery. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-line card from it. That player discards that card. If you don't control a fairy, exile a card from your hand. God, that's terrible. That is just brutal. So basically, play this in a fairy deck or don't play it at all. You've wasted your life. Let's see if I can do any better with it. Corbinix says, don't you technically need to shuffle their deck for every Gravestorm trigger? Ooh, good question. Good question, good question. Search target player's library for a card and remove it from the game. Then that player shuffles their library. Technically, yes. Practically speaking, you know, your opponent is just going to let you, like, search for all the cards and exile them. Practically speaking. Someone to foresee with a rapid decay. This is a zombie card. Two mana instant, cycling for two. Remove, tar uh, remove from the game up to three target cards from a single graveyard. See, this is worse than that other cycling card. So there was that other one that was like one black, remove three cards from the graveyard. This is like a little too expensive. And I believe it had cycling for one mana. This one has cycling for two. So definitely a terrible remove from the game card. We have got Dylan with the Blood Curdler. Sounds disgusting. Should do a weird art show. 
I had a few of them. They're awkward because, you know, art is like some people are like, this is beautiful. They would love they, they keep this in their wallet right next to their kid's picture. And then some people are like, this is disgusting. This looks like somebody's like spleen, uh, I don't know, thrown on the sidewalk. Okay, we have a black one generic 1-1 one, one horror with flying. At the beginning of your upkeep, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Then there is a threshold. It gets plus two plus, sorry, it gets plus one plus one and has at the, end, at the end of your turn, remove two cards in your graveyard from the game. Oh, I see. So it's like, we're working really hard to get a plus one plus one. So the idea is threshold. If you have seven cards in your graveyard, it's going to get a, the ability. It's going to get plus one plus one. That's great. We have we are working really hard to have a grizzly bear. Give your upkeep. Put the top card of your library into your graveyard. I guess the only benefit to this card is it's helping you keep threshold. But the best case scenario is it's like it's a flying grizzly bear. That's it. Do you make blood cheese with the bl with the curdled blood? That's up to you. I do not. Okay, next up, let's take a one from Corbinek, Bitter Blossom Synergy. Did anyone not get a card at this point? Uh, Bitter Blossom. Oh, you're talking about another card with Bitter Blossom. Okay, Christopher B. Co Mano's Blessing. Mano! Okay. Oh, I just probably spelled blessing wrong. Three mana enchant creature. You may play Commando's Blessing anytime you could play an instant. If a creature dealt damage by enchanted creature this turn would be put into a graveyard, remove it from the game instead. <laughs> That's it? You may play Commando's Blessing anytime you could play an instant. What is this card even trying to accomplish? So, like, if the card dies, it gets exiled. Is that even a red thing? I can play this at instant speed. They'll never see it coming. They won't even know this card was even in print. If a creature dealt damage by enchanted creature. Oh, I put on the enchanted creature that's killing the other creature. And then it gets removed from the game. Really, really, really awkward card. Yeah, surprise! That's exile uh, synergy for you. That's for sure. Uh, Star with a young engine. Five mana artifact, enters the battlefield tapped, tap, exile, eon engine, reverse the game's turn over. That is pointless! I mean, maybe it's not completely pointless, but why? You're doing it because you can? This is a doing it because you can card. Oh, that sounds like a great show idea. Cards that have no point except that you can. You're going to deprive the person to your left their turn. That's all you're doing. Ecos with Elkin Bottle Old. It's a weird name. Impulse draw cost many mana. Okay, for three mana, we pay another uh, three mana. Tap, remove the top card of your library from the game. Until the end of, until the beginning of your next upkeep, you may play that card. You only, it's only one card. No, that's terrible. At least they give you until next turn to play it. Because you're not going to have any mana the turn that you activated it, that's for sure. Infinite turns if you can copy the artifact. Oh, is it? No, you reverse the turn order, right? There's Battlefield tapped. You, exi you exile it. You reverse the game's turn order. So you give the turn order to somebody else. Oh, I see. If you can make, like, two copies... You reverse you like reverse the order then you reverse the order again to go back to you so do, isn't it just like it's not infinite turns it's like infinite turns with somebody else you can definitely lock two people out of the game it's possible it sounds impo i don't I, I don't know how you're making it work though good luck on that one swords to plowshares that's a good exile card too good in fact bryce with bronze tablet All the tablets back then. Six mana? Okay, I'm not reading the ancient scripture. It's banned everywhere. You are probably banned for anti. 
You've been a bad, bad tablet. You've been gambling, haven't you? You have- yeah, you've been gambling. I know it. Show me your wallet. It's gonna be empty, isn't it? Okay, uh, remove it from the deck. Uh, if you're not playing for anti, comes to play tapped. Pay four, tap, exile, bronze, tablet, and target non-token permanent opponent controls. That player may pay ten life. If they do, put bronze tablet into its owner's graveyard. Otherwise, that player, the, uh, the, that player owns bronze tablet and you own the other, uh, the other exiled card? Oh god. Sounds very gambly like I'm gonna steal your card. Literally. For forever. Uh, Alright, next up. Take a super chat we got from Alpha Nerd. Fractured Identity. I don't think we've done Fractured Identity. No, this card's insane. Like, what, what's up with this? This card's. This is like one of the best cards of all time. Uh, okay, it's like a really good draft card. Uh, Exile target an online for each player other than the controller. Like, I basically, I blow your thing up, I get a copy of it. Okay, trust, trust Danny's judgment. You had a backup. Thank God you had a backup. Trust Danny's judgment. Six mana for an instant. Exile target creature, then populate. It's awkward. It's not the worst. It's not. I, I mean, I'm not playing this card. I'll, I'll give you that. Six mana to t exile a creature. And, yeah. Okay. If I have no token in play, it's useless. Stone cold useless. Nor in the wary is great. It's a great card. Cunning linguist. The flay essence. Three mana sorcery, exile target creature, planeswalker, you gain life equal to the number of counters on it. And if it had no counters, then what? This honestly isn't that bad either. It's like, it's a three mana exile uh, creature or planeswalker. That's pretty strong. Like, there's not a lot of exile planeswalker cards in the game. I like the card. I like the stock. Um... Okay, Crowcore Games with uh, Worf Fang, Worm Fang Turtle. Why is it called a Worm Fang Turtle? It's a three mana two four. When it comes into play, remove a land you control from the game. So it, it ate up my land. When it leaves play, return the, <laughs> remove my land back to play under its owner's control. Why? It's not, it's not even a pretty impress. it's not even an impressive 2-4 creature. It doesn't even have island walk. You know, 3 mana for a 2-4 is almost standard at this point of the game. In the age of power creep, 3 mana 2-4, and you have to remove your land. I guess that what would make it good is if you remove a land with an ETB or something. It's the only thing you could, the only way you can justify this. World of Gorge or Dragon is too good. Way too good. Elixir with Gideon's Defeat. Isn't this like specifically for a Gideon Planeswalker does something? Exile target white creature that's attacking or blocking. If it was a Gideon Planeswalker, you gain five life. I agree, this card's terrible. Very narrow. And even, even then, the payoff is just not there. Oh, I'm sorry, Arcanus. Your one card got disqualified. King Ginger, Sadistic Sacrament. Oh! Wait a minute, what is this card? It's a triple black card, right? It's a triple black card. Uh, it's a sorcery with a kicker of seven. Uh, target player, target search target player's library for up to three cards, exile them. Then that player shuffles their library. If Sadistic Sacrament was kicked, instead search that player's library for up to 15 cards. Exile them, that player shuffles their library. Well, this is just a crappy, well, memory selection. But you, the thing is, you can go, like, select, you can select the memory of your opponents. That's the, uh, that's the payoff over here. Uh, next up. The Jaded says the Jester's Cap in the same wake as Sacraments. Okay, hold on, Jester's Cap. Way too slow these days. The 
This is like an updated Jester's Cap. Four mana artifact, pay two tap. Sacrifice Jester's Cap. Search target player's library for three cards and exile them. Then that player shuffles. This is like worse. You can't, you can't go beyond three. And it's more expensive. Uh, next super chat coming from Alpha Nerd. Analyze the pollen. Sounds, sounds, sounds like something the bees would do. Okay, we have a green sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may collect evidence eight. Search your library for a basic land card. If evidence was collected, instead search your library for a creature or land card. Reveal that card, point your hand, and shuffle. Hold on, what, uh... Oh, this, you have to pay, you have to exile, exile cards with total mana value eight or greater from your graveyard. It's like a delve spell, almost. Uh, I don't like this card. What if you know if it was an activated ability or part of an activated ability, I would count it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna really count this card. If it's exiled what you search for, I'd also count it. It do, I don't feel I don't feel the, the theme of exile in this in this particular card. We'll donate your thing to Cra Cackling Goblin with the Sky Ship Weatherlight. Four mana. When it comes into play, search your library for any number of artifacts and or creature cards and remove them from the game. Again? Why? I don't I don't understand the strategic benefit to doing this. Yes, let's exile all the cards that matter in my deck from the game. It's exactly why I bought those cards. Pay for tap. Search uh choose a card at random that was removed ah from the game with Skyship Weatherlight. Put that card in your hand. Unfortunately though, it's still random. So you're not you're taking a chance. Oh, I see you can go get one. So you're not taking any chance at all. Maybe this card is better than I think it is. Super clunky. But then you could blink it and then go get another one. Maybe this card is better than I give it credit for. Back in the day, this was card advantage. Yeah, back in the yes, the card advantage era. Back then wasn't even a good card advantage era era. Back in the day was the era of like getting your head blasted in your face with uh, a ton of mana from the Urza's block. Once plane shift came around, okay, like th that era was gone. All right, Mario, save the stream. You ha you have to save the stream with Kulfner's plans. Unless you donate somehow. Kalfiner's plans. A four mana enchantment. Comes into play. Remove the top seven cards of your library from the game face down. You may look at the and you may look at and play cards removed from the game with Kalfiner's plans. You also skip your draw step. You can't play more than one spell each turn. What the hell is going on here? Okay, comes into play. Remove seven cards from my library face down. I could look at so it gives me a new hand essentially, but I have to skip my draw step, and I can't play more than one more than one spell each turn. Oh, that'd be cool actually. Yeah, you you get this, you donate it. Uh, outside of that, this is terrible. I do not think this is worth putting the card face down. I don't think it's worth. Like, what's the point of drawing an extra seven cards? You can only play one card per turn. I mean, maybe in commander it's not too bad because you could play spells on your opponent's turn, so it's like a weird card draw. I could see this working in some weird way. Oh, but the problem is you can eventually run out of cards and then you're dead. That you could, you actually could just be locked out of the game. That's a problem. Don't get locked out of the game, folks. Stay in the game. Just as it didn't get a card today, Abzan Charm. Man, that was a standard all-star. Three mana to exile a creature with power three or greater, or you draw two cards and lose two life, or you distribute two plus one plus one counters on one or two target creatures? I would say this is still pretty good. It's jank playable. It's like, it's all right, like, it's, it's like low power commander playable, definitely. Uh, next up with uh, Ecos, the Nefarious Leech. I think it's Leech. I can't remember. Four mana to L to disenchant bargain. Okay, we do have four mana. If you'd be dealt damage, remove that many cards in your graveyard from the game instead. If you can't, you lose the game. 
If you had gained life, draw that many cards instead, and when it leaves play, you also lose the game. A lot of high risk, super high risk card around here. How can we make life gain good? Well, Nefarious Lich. And then, uh, is it fair? Is this... Like, it's... You can die off this thing! Alright, Disenchant, you're dead. Or something of that nature. Okay, Arcanus wants to get redeemed for the World Gorger Dragon. Okay, Krond... The... Dawn... Clad. Six mana. There's not even any generic mana in this casting cost. This this card must be going hard. Six six flying vigilance. When it attacks, if it's enchanted, exile target permanent. Only if it's enchanted. So you have to play an aura on this thing. It's like a combo to be unlocked. I would never play it. Okay, crow card games. Uh, we've got Wormfang Newt. Most of the Wormfangs are terrible. Two mana, two, two, Nightmare Beast. When Wormfang Newt comes into play, remove a land you control from the game. When N Wormfang Newt leaves play, return the remove card to play under its owner's control. <laughs> Why? So, Grizzly Bear, four blue, that eats their own lands. Gobbles them up. There is no advantage to this card whatsoever. Yeah, all the Newts are terrible. All right, wait, wait, this is a Wormfang? It's a Nightmare Salamander Beast. By the way, yesterday you made a reference to Inspector Gadget. It's Dr. Claw. You had it wrong? Oh. I don't remember my Inspector Gadget then very well. You got Penny. You have Inspector Gadget. You have the dog. Okay, John. Endless Souls is a bit clunky. I'm counting on it. Well, not quite Endless. Endless... Oh, sorry. It's Endless Sands. Endless? Oh, this is the one I thought was Safe Haven. Because it's like the desert version of Safe Haven. Okay, you pay a colorless. Pay At least you add mana with this card. Pay two, tap, exile target creature you control. Then you can pay four, tap, sacrifice endless sands. Return each creature card exiled with endless sands to the battlefield under its owner's control. But be, be warned, if they wasteland you and strip mine, it still will be your undoing. Alright, that's it for today. Oh, we have Crocor Games here with one more Worm Fang. A Worm Fang Crab. Gonna get them Worm Fangs. Possibly the worst one. It's unblockable. Comes to play, an opponent chooses a permit you control and removes it from the game. Oh, why? No, why was I designed no. to feel pain? And when it leaves play, remove. When it leaves play, return the remove card to play under its owner's control. You only get like a 3-6 for 4 mana out of this thing. It's, what, what a disaster. Alright everyone, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Uh, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here weekdays, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks to everyone who supports the show. If you're a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show. Or you help super chat to let other be people be part of the show. And thank you so much for being here this morning to make the show the, what it is today. Oh, we got Ecos with another card. Orcish Library. Oh, you guys. Orcish. Oh, it's Orcish Librarian? I didn't know Orcs read. Can I even get this? Okay, while well, we wait for Orcish Library... Is this even a thing? No. Library. There's no such thing as Orcish Library. <laughs> Anyway, okay, we're gonna, so we're gonna thank Cunning Linguist, Toads, Ferginka, Cackling Goblin X, Carlo, uh, Mario, Kano, Erland, Toads, Re, Mr. Deadhead, Someone to Foresee, Turiot, uh, The Jaded, Toads. Oh, it's just called Librarian? There is no such thing as Librarian. It's not, it's, there is, there isn't Librar, oh, hold on, Librarian. I just looked up Library. Or, oh, it's here. Okay, I found... Okay, it wasn't Orcish Library. It was Orcish Librarian. Okay, uh, we have a two-mana, 
one one orc pay red tap look at the top eight cards of your library remove four of them at random from the game put the rest on the top of your library at any order that is terrible and i wish this card was shown to us at the beginning of the show because this would be perfect for it eating the library paste what is library paste you're eating the books whatever Thank you very much, Saza, King Ginger, Topmost Flavor, Jess, Bryce, uh, Crackling Goblin. I think I've got everybody. Because you guys are the show. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing them coffees and we'll keep brewing the magic. Take care of yourselves and I will see you at the next cup.